And I have to tell you, this is the Wolverine that I've been dreaming oh, fantastic. Since, since I was a teenager. Well, I, you know, I've been very aware as I've entered this world and was working on the last one that people really wanted to see something different. Um, not, not throwing you away, not throwing everything away, but just going deeper and darker and more intense. And I think that the, you know, the limitations weren't always just about the ambitions of the filmmakers, but it's, it has a lot to do with the audience you're aiming at and the rating you're getting. And um, one of the things Hugh and I were very adamant about was we want to make a grown-up movie. And, and that may restrict the audience somewhat, ultimately, commercially, but the fact is that it's something we haven't seen before, and that's what made us interested to do it. You know, to make a film that is essentially a comic book movie, but not for 12-year-olds. And it's funny, because I remember when I spoke to Hugh uh, a while back when he did the second X-Men, you can tell that the tone of his character was dark when he was, you know, putting everything on these soldiers and stuff like that. Now that this is Hugh's last portrayal of Wolverine, does that make it difficult for you to make this film? You mean like the burden or the weight? Yeah, of yeah. The... Um, you know, it's an interesting story. Like when I was making Walk the Line with Joaquin Phoenix, I'd have this thing, Joaquin would always say to me, tell me the thing, tell me the thing. And I'd go, you're not Johnny Cash. And that was every day. I'd go, you're not Johnny Cash. And in a weird way, it's similar in this. It's like, I just can't pay attention to it. If you think every day, oh my God, this is the last time he'll ever, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, this is the last movie. Oh my God. You literally will choke. You know, it's like you can't go up to bat in a baseball game and be thinking about the game's on the line. I have to hit now. You have to just look at the ball. You have to put the bat on the ball. And every day, you know, my focus is, and it's the way I try to service the legacy, obviously, the great legacy of the, this character and Hugh's, um, man, you know, almost 20-year portrayal of this character, um, is to go in every day and try and keep my eye on the ball, if, as it were, you know. How do you bring, f uh, how do you bring uh, f fresh air to this franchise with so much entity entries? Well, I think, I think everything starts with a, a set of goals that are different. You know, um, the, changing the goals changes the, the product that will come from them. And so by, as I was saying to you before, Kelvin, making a more adult film is part of it. Part of it is, is a tone shift. You know, I got, we, the movie takes place in 2029, which just gave me enough space from the existing timeline and all the other stuff that I, I wasn't making another episode in kind of the, T the X-Men TV series, mm -hmm. as it were. I was making a kind of original film, you know, that we had enough space that where you find Logan at the beginning and what's going on with him and Charles can in its own way be original and new. Speaking of uh, 2029, 20, how do you go about settling uh, on that year and how do you see the, f how do you picture the future of that? Well, I didn't want to go too far in the future that we suddenly were, um, uh, burdened with having to kind of create a whole universe and suddenly I'm making a super <laughs> CG movie with every city and town and building is a creation, um, is, a, is a computer creation. But I wanted to get far enough in the future, like I said, that we were free and clear of the existing films and any of the kind of media connections to them, but also that Logan's age was getting pushed up enough that we could suddenly come upon him in um, vulnerable and weaker and not quite the same Wolverine we're used to seeing. And on top of that, he's caring for a father figure who's even weaker than that in a very elderly and ailing Charles Xavier. The female character, which is a, a main role in it, how did you go about picking a Spanish character for that? Well, part of the backstory for that character um, is that she comes from south of the border. And so she comes, she's been developed and created, as it were, um, in a laboratory that exists in Mexico City. So what, it was very important to me um, to cast um, the role with an Hispanic actress. And also, um, I think, um, as you'll see later, and she begins to actually say something, um, the film is actually bilingual. Um, you are actually, he, um, Logan's going to be confronted with a um, Spanish-speaking progeny. Uh, the last question I have for you, other than... Logan, Wolverine, what other X-Men character do you like? What other X-Men characters do I like? Yeah. Other than uh, Charles Xavier, I adore. Um, Phoenix, um, uh, Magneto is awesome. <laughs> I mean, Magneto's amazing. I like all the characters with kind of tortured, more tortured backstories. <laughs> um, the, um, but, but I'd say Magneto is my other favorite.
That's okay. my other great favorite. 